Hey, I'm Dan Lusinski, Dark Angel Cutlery. I'm uh, about to track the sheath here for a uh, slotted guard hunter I made. And I uh, thought I'd share that with you, maybe give some tips and pointers to those who are just getting into sheath making or who are uh, looking into make some sheaths for their existing knives. But uh, this is the slotted guard hunter that um, I'm making the sheath for. Um, this is the third of these slotted guards that I've made in the last month and a half, two months or so, and um, the third sheet that I've made as well. So I'm getting uh, intimately familiar in the process. Uh, I've made uh, dozens of sheets over the years, uh, much like this. This is a, a pancake style sheath, and uh, it's not really a pancake style sheath yet, but it's about to be. Um, this is a, uh, a um, not really a drop leg, it's kind of a mid-hip uh, carry sheath, meaning that the sheath sits up a little high around the hip it doesn't drop down and rest on the thigh so a little easier to grab hold the handle the handle isn't uh fully um laid against the sheath the handle actually is just above the sheath so you've got something exposed that you can grab a hold of um, i like making my sheaths like that especially uh you know if it's a hunting knife and i want to be able to access it pretty quick out in the woods and uh, grab a hold of it if i need to but um, right now, this sheath has been, uh, it's been cut, it's been uh, dyed, it's been um, glued together, and right now I'm just clamping with these little compression um, clamps, these little gator clamps. So um, once I, I cut and dye my pieces of the sheath and I'm ready to, um, you know, do the pancake style stitch, um, it needs to be glued together. Now, there's a lot of different glues you can use for gluing. Um, there's uh, some basic uh, leather weld glue. There's um, some people I've seen use Gorilla Glue. I've tried that. It didn't really work out well for me. Gorilla Glue is a little over the top for uh, glue in a sheath. Um, I think if you use something like that, you probably don't even need to be stitching it. But um, something that I have really preferred using um, is this E6000. This is great stuff. You can get it right at Hobby Lobby or Home Depot, anywhere. It's uh, kind of basically rubber cement. It's the same thing. And it, uh, it bonds leather really well. You coat both surfaces and uh, sandwich the two surfaces together. You almost don't even need to really clamp these. If you pinch it and hold it for a little bit, that's usually enough. You'll also see I've got these little pieces of scrap leather um, on the face here around where it's been clamped. Now I do that just so these, um, these clamps, the jaws are, are slightly textured so they don't slide off very easily. But I do that so, um, so it those jaws don't damage the uh, the finish of the sheath because the sheath has been tooled really nicely and there are uh, you know some fancy little designs here. We don't want to damage that. Um, just that bigger clamp actually had put a little bit of a a little bit of a um, a dent in there. So you know I'm gonna kind of work that out with a with a smooth uh, piece of wood and I can rub that right down and just kind of tool it out. So um, I use uh, little punches and stamps to tool my sheaths. And I don't know how well that's going to come in on the camera. We don't really have the best lighting in here. Maybe I can adjust that. No, that's annoying. Oh, there it goes. Well, sometimes the uh, lights in here flicker a bit, and I can't really get good lighting in here. So especially on a dreary day like today, we don't have the best lighting option. But uh, maybe that'll help. So we're off to stitch this. Um, when I did my layout for this sheath and I, um, before I started cutting, I basically took my big sheet of leather and I buy, uh, you know, large uh, full belly sliced pieces of leather. They're, um, if you buy the full belly of the cow, it's usually nine to 11 ounce leather. It's really heavy duty. It's great for tooling and making sheaths, especially if you want something nice and thick. Um, you can even use it for gun holsters. So, um, I always go with heavier leather on my sheaths. I just prefer a nice, heavy, high quality sheath. Um, I, I know some people use um, five ounce, six ounce, even seven ounce leather, but nine to 10 ounce leather is the way to go. Um, so I buy the big belly sheets. But what I do is I usually cut the back panel first and you'll see the back panel has the, the belt loop that just folds over and that's stitched on the back. Sometimes I'll rivet that. Um, sometimes I'll square it up and make it wider, but I actually did um, taper it as um, it came up in length. And uh, just for no reason, just to make it easy to slide a belt through there. It's more than enough leather to give it strength. Um, that's about an uh, inch and a half, which is about the width of a belt. 
Um, I've got about uh, two and a half, maybe three inches of room here, so you could even slide this on a heavy, uh, you know, military grade utility belt if you wanted to. Um, I take this back panel and um, I put the, the finished side uh, to the inside of the sheath. Now I do that because this leather belt loop really should be finished. So when you fold that up and around, you're gonna have finished leather all the way up and around. Leaving the back side sort of unfinished, but if it's dyed, you're not really gonna notice that. Plus it's gonna be against the body when it's worn on the hip, so it won't really matter so much. Then I, uh, I cut a loop or cut a strip that will be the handle retention. Now you'll see this is, I can actually slide this in here. It's just glued, but it should, um, should be able to hold this in. When, when I go to slide my knife in, I always hold those uh, straps out of the way just till it gets past the blade because I don't want the blade to cut through my retention strap or anything. Now this, this knife's a nice snug fit and that's what you want because you don't want your knife moving around when it's in there. Now, mind you, this has not even been stitched, and this is holding the knife in there. It's really what you want. You want that leather snug on the blade. So we've got this nice snap here, and uh, this leather's really thick. Like I said, this is 10 out, so it's uh, going to snap nice and tight, and the snaps are nice and strong. I leave a little, uh, little bit of um, tab on that strap, that retention strap, so this can just flick free. And... Uh, there we go. So snaps are tight until they're broken in. It's brass material um, and they are riveted. So I have a rivet tool and I take my, my leather working mallet and uh, I hammer those rivets in and these things are never going anywhere. So these snaps are permanent. And I also, um, let's pull this back out here. So, and uh, the rivet in the center there is what holds this on, but it also allows it to swivel and uh, slide out of the way if you need to move it out of the way. But these rivets are also also permanent. They're uh, riveted on there. So it's a standard uh, Tandy um, leather rivet. So the sheath is now ready to be stitched, like I said. Um, after I cut that back panel and I dyed it, I cut a track. Now the track is the, the piece of leather that sits between the face and the back panel. Now that track is to allow for the width of the knife. Now, if I just put two pieces of leather together and sandwiched them down and stitched them, there'd be nothing protecting that blade edge from cutting the stitching when it goes down into the sheath. So basically what we do is we cut two of these faces and the piece that functions as the track, and you can almost see that track down in there if you look straight on it. I don't know how well the camera is gonna pick that up, but. You take that piece that's the same size as the face and you basically lay the knife down on it and you trace around the blade. And then you go and, and cut that out. So it looks kind of like a U shape, but in the shape of the knife. And it's just a perimeter that goes around the knife, but it also sits between these two pieces of leather. Now um, that gets glued down first to the back panel. And I also dye the edge before I do that. And then I put glue on the face of that track or that seam. And then I go and I put my face down. Now, like I said earlier, with this uh, rubber cement E6000 glue, I cover both sides of each surface before I clamp those down together. I also let the rubber cement sit on the leather for about, about 30 to 40 seconds, half a minute, maybe a minute, just for the glue to kind of set up and get a little bit tacky. That way when I smush the two pieces of leather together, it's not going anywhere. Now this rubber cement is the best because if you're gonna go and uh, do some stitching afterwards and you gotta punch a needle and some thread through it or an awl through it, um, it's gonna go through a lot easier. Now, even if this has already been punched, which this has, uh, I use a, uh, a four prong uh, chisel punch and I also have a three prong hollow punch. So sometimes I'll hollow punch and sometimes I'll chisel punch. This has been chisel punched, which means the leather is stretched out of the way and a hole is sent through. If I use the hollow punch, that means the leather is removed from that hole and the needle will go through much easier. So it's a choice of preference, but also um, certain, uh, certain types of sheaths um, lend well better to hollow punching instead of chisel punching. Something like this where you're lining up your layers nice and smooth and they're all punched through individually before they're sandwiched, um, chisel punch is fine. It'll, it'll stretch the leather aside and, and make nice uh, holes, four prongs at a time. So um, yeah, we've got our tooling, we've got our die, we've got our sheath all glued together. So what we're gonna do now is call the track stitch. 
Now, um, I use these stitch awls. It's, uh, it's a nice awl because it's got a little spool down here and you can load it up with the color of thread you're gonna use or whatever thread you've decided to go with the knife. Now this knife has some really nice blue maple um, in the upper segment of the handles and it has some natural curly maple down below. So I chose some um, blue colored stitching to go with the brown or light brown color dye. And uh, that'll kind of add some contrast, but it'll also tie in the knife with the sheath. Um, I think if you're a knife maker, you know full well the importance in um, having some, some flow between the pieces of your knife, whether it be from the handle to the blade or the knife to the sheath. Everything should tie in and look like it's meant to be together. You don't want to make a sheath that look like it could be a sheath for any other knife. Because if you're a knife collector or you're just a knife guy, um, you probably have dozens of sheaths and you have dozens of knives and it's easy for those to get separated and trying to figure out which one goes with which can be a huge pain in the ass. So making them look like they go with the knife is helpful to the owner, but it's also uh, important to making an artistic piece. Um, back where we were, stitching. Um, I use a track stitch mostly. Um, you can do a loop stitch that goes around the outside of the sheath. Um, a track stitch te technically just runs right down uh, in a track down the um, along the seam of the knife. And before I go and do my track, and actually before I dive this sheath, I took a uh, an edge tool or a lining tool. Now this tool has a little gate on here or a little guide. And this little metal guide goes to the edge of the sheath. So the center here has a little uh, a little hole in it and it's very sharp. So as you go and uh, take this track and take that guide and run it down the edge of the sheath, it carves a, uh, a very shallow line uh, into the face of that sheath. And it gives you a line for where you're going to be punching and where you're gonna be stitching. It also digs that line in deep a little bit. So the stitching sits down into the sheath. The stitching doesn't sit up on the outside of the sheath because if the stitching sat up on the outside of the sheath and it was pronounced, it would be easy to scrape it against something and damage the thread. So granted, this is waxed thread that we're using and it's a very strong, very tough thread and it's got some thickness to it and it's waxed, but we still wanna protect the thread as much as possible and this makes, makes this sheath as durable as possible. So having that track there and having the stitching set down into it is crucial to making the sheath last. Um, you'll also notice that my, my tooling here runs down uh, along that uh, track as well around the perimeter of the knife. Now that really makes it look like it's framed in very well. Um, the stitching is going to really kind of put a line and a perimeter around the edge of that sheath. It goes in a little uh, about, boy, about three eighths, maybe a quarter inch in from the edge of the sheath. Now that gives me enough room to um, do a little sanding of the edges afterwards. If I have to touch it up with dye, I can. I can also use um, gum terenkanth. Uh, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, that's okay. But uh, gum terenkanth is a, uh, a chemical that we put on the seams of the sheath and it actually softens up and moistens the leather to the point where you can take a, uh, a slicker tool, a piece of wood, um, you can even use the handle of your hammer, and you just run it back and forth on the seam of that sheath and the terenkanth softens up that leather so much that it starts to seam smoothly. So you end up with this melded together seam, really nice. Now there's some other chemicals you can use and some other sealants. You can even take beeswax and put it along the seam. I use both usually. I'll do the terenkanth and I'll soften my seams and then I'll slick them with a wood tool and soften them right up. I even have one that goes on a drill that spins really fast and you just run it along the edges and it'll meld those seams together really nice. But that's all after we do our stitching. So back to, as I mentioned with this, tra this track stitch, it runs all the way around the perimeter of the knife. And I usually start at the, uh, the front side of the blade because that's where I want it to look nice and clean and be the strongest because the blade is gonna be putting a lot of pressure on the area when you draw it out. That way I finish on the back, uh, on this back side here on the back of the blade and allow me to tie it off really nicely and melt my knot over with a little bit of uh, heat from a lighter. Um, the track stitch is going to run along the back with a piece. I call that the tail of the stitching. So what I do is I punch, or because this has already been punched, I'm just gonna push this all through and I need to make sure I have my glasses so I see what the hell I'm doing, which they're around here somewhere, here we go. So I'm gonna find the first hole, 
And hopefully when I punched both the, uh, the back panel and the, the track or the seam and the face, all my punches lined up pretty good. So hopefully this all will send right through both those holes and uh, this should track stitch very easily. So what we wanna do when we get this, um, this needle and thread through, and I mentioned there would be a tail to the, uh, to the back side. Now the back panel didn't line up perfectly, but that's okay. We're just gonna a little soft punch because this has been dyed and the leather's nice and soft right now. It should punch through nice and easy. It even can take a uh, screwdriver or tip of a pen, and then I'm gonna grab that loop on the other side and pull that stitching on through. Now it's important that we pull enough stitching through the other side to run all the way around the track of this sheath. Now, um, when you're doing that, because the stitching sometimes sets into the sheath a little bit and you're actually making like these little half loops because you want where both stitches meet at the track because you have thread going around the back and then when you're punching the all in and out, you have thread going across the face too. So it's not a straight line all the way around the sheath, it's actually little U shapes. So I always pull a little more than what it takes to go around the perimeter of the sheath. So I know on the back here, I'm gonna have this track with this tail running all the way around. So I go all the way around, come up the other side, and then just to make sure I have enough, I make sure I have enough to go all the way back. Now that's gonna leave a lot of extra, you know, maybe not too much extra. I've run out before even with this method, so it's not an exact science. So you're better off because thread is cheap. Make sure you have extra. You don't want to be having to tie off another piece of thread and start all over again with more thread in the middle of your project because then you have to tie another knot. It looks messy. It's not continuous. So I make sure I have about that much. Like I said, it's enough to go around once and then around again and even a little extra. So now that we've got the needle through and our sewing all is through that first hole, we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna hold the tail in place when we do that. That's gonna leave our tail on the other side. Now we're gonna send the all back through once more into the next set of holes. And I say set of holes, meaning the holes that go through both the face of the sheath and the track. And that went through nice and easy, lined up perfect. So when I push the all through, it looks like the, the thread was pulled tight on both sides of the needle. But then I back the all out just a little bit and it starts to make a loop on the back side of that all. Now that's the loop that I wanna send my thread through. It's also not the lead loop, meaning the loop that runs alongside of the needle and comes from the spool. You don't wanna loop through that lead loop because it'll cause a tangle. It's always through the back side of that all through that uh, following loop which is the loop that's continuing the track down your knife. So I send that through that hole and then I pull my tail tight and I hold it to the sheath and I pull my awl all the way back out. Now I have a continuous track. That's my first link in my track stitch and it's also the most important. Now this is a good time to decide whether or not you wanna double that first stitch. I might actually do that right now because this is the top of our sheath and it's also the point uh, at which the most stress is gonna be on this knife or on this sheath because the knife is gonna push through the sheath when you go and uh, insert it in. Because I'm not putting a rivet through the top there where this sheath meets, uh, I wanna make sure my stitching is as strong as possible. So I'm gonna track backwards from where I started, I'm gonna pull it through, and then I'm gonna track back in where I just was. Now that's making a double track through that one uh, area of holes there and sending it back through the loop. I don't have a lot there, so I'm gonna push it forward and then back it back out and make sure that loop opens right up nice and I can send my tail through. I'm gonna pull the tail tight and now I have a double track right there. Now that's my, like I said, my first um, track in the track stitch. So it's my first uh, of the succession of holes that will be in here, the first succession of tracks. Start the next hole send it through, make sure it comes out the other side. Now these awls are really nice because the needle that comes in the awl is kind of a chisel tip needle, uh, meaning that the tip of the needle has a flat spot on it. It's pointed, but it's also got a flat spot. And that's good because if the needle's having a tough time pushing through the, uh, the leather, you can actually wiggle it back and forth 
And that chisel will cut through the leather. It'll actually find its way through. It'll pilot its way right down in. So I've had that happen quite a bit with the holes just not lining up on leather uh, here and there. It happens, but um, I'm actually getting really lucky here because my track uh, or my holes between the layers of leather have lined up really well. Now, sometimes like if you've got a, uh, a window sheath you're making or if you're adding a couple extra pieces of leather to give your, uh, your sheath some depth or some thickness, you might have to uh, really struggle to get that needle to find its way through the holes and through the layers of leather. And uh, because you're punching them in most instances separately before, um, before putting the leather together, sandwiching it together, a lot of times it's a struggle to get those holes to line up. So having that chisel tip find its way through is going to be a lot easier than, um, or a lot, um, a lot easier with that, with that chisel tip. It's going gonna, it's gonna to find its way. Um, I've even had to take my uh, leather mallet and tap the back side of the awl. It's an okay thing to do if you've got a MDF board or something that you're doing your stitching on. That's what I use here. Um, it gets pretty softened up, the board does, and uh, you, can, you can hammer on it. You can send a needle through the other side. It's not going to... It's not going to damage your, your work surface and um, gives you something to sink the needle into that's not going to break the needle. So this is going really well so far. I now have uh, what five tracks here or five, um, five, uh, five holes or five links through the leather. And uh, of course, now I find myself at a point where it's starting to be difficult, but that's okay. I give it a little bit of a push and it finds its way right through the leather. So again, you push that needle through, you back it out a little bit and it makes a nice little loop in the leather and you can run your tail through it. So now's a good point too, because we're about a little less than a third down this first side of the sheath. It's good to take a look at your tail See how much leather you have. Um, because we only have about five uh, tracks in here so far, or five loops, if we thought we didn't have enough leather or we start or enough uh, thread and we started to rethink our situation here and say, oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it all the way around through or I don't know if I have enough thread, now's a good time where if you didn't, you could back it out, you could start pulling your loops, you could even cut the thread, and then you could re, uh, re-thread your... Um, your spool on your awl and make sure you have more thread make sure you got enough because like i said it's important to have a nice continuous track all the way around it's okay um you know if you got pretty far through and then you realized you were short you could tie it off at a point where there's a, a interruption in the the shape of the sheath and then um you know add more thread and start a new track it's not uh it's not an impossible thing to do so i'm gonna take a brief break and i'm gonna continue on with this and uh, we'll start back up when this is uh, being completed and tied off. Hey, we're back. And I've finished up the stitching on our pancake style sheath. The blue thread has been track stitched all the way around and tied off on the back. So we're good to go. It looks tough. We uh, made double loops at the finish and at the beginning. And we've got a nice, strongly made sheath uh, with a riveted uh, um, retention strap. And we'll try out the, uh, the knife in the sheath. Really beautiful looking sheath. Like I said before, the only thing you have to worry about when uh, putting your knife down on the sheath is just to hold back the retention strap. You can also just push the belt loop back. Um, it's a lot easier if you're wearing it on your hip because basically you just pull forward the base of the sheath and it'll naturally lift away the belt loop from the, uh, from the blade as it's inserted in. And uh, everything snaps off nice. The only thing I, I want to do that I haven't done yet is on the inside of the um, sheath, I'm going to, or on the inside of the retention strap, I'm sorry, I'm going to put a little um, tab of leather right there. That way, when you go to push down on the snap against the handle, it won't push that brass into the wood and gradually wear away at the finish of the wood because that can happen. It can cause a little bit of, um, you know, just um, kind of wear there. So, but nice and snug leather sheath. I mean, that is not, not budging. I mean, you can probably inch it out if you shake it hard enough, but so snug on that uh, blade that it sits in there nice and tight. And this is a... Uh, 
10 ounce sheath all the way around. If it's nice and snug around the blade, just pull that retention strap out of the way and draw the knife. We're gonna now coat it with acrylic resiline. You know, come to think of it, I'm also gonna put some, uh, a little tab of leather over that uh, rivet, that brass rivet on the inside of the strap, because also when you push down that snap around the handle, you're pushing the handle against brass, and uh, brass on any finished uh, wood, even if it's been stabilized, can cause wear, so we don't wanna, uh, we don't wanna allow that to wear at the knife. Uh, so let's set the knife aside. We have our gloves on again, and I do have my, uh, my lovely reading glasses. It's fun to get old. And uh, I also have another product here. Um, well, first, this is the, uh, the Fibbings or Feebings um, Acrylic Resiline. It uh, comes in one of these uh, four ounce bottles. Pretty much all leather products come in these four ounce bottles. Why, I do not know. But um, that's the magic number. I think you can get a, uh, like a 10 or 12 ounce bottle as well. It's considerably more expensive, obviously, but um, that's uh, another option. Uh, and I'm going to use the same swab I used to apply the leather dye. Now, the only thing about doing something like this is you have to be careful that the majority of that dye has been soaked out of this pom-pom. And you can use a paper towel to do that as I did. Um, this is just so you don't transfer any dye into your resiline because if you do that and you have a different color of sheath, you'll be reapplying a small portion of that dye into your sheath or onto your, uh, onto your work especially uh, problematic if you have a natural looking sheet that you're sealing up and you have, uh, you know, leftover dye in your, in your resiline there, it will change the color. So I just kind of lightly dip the pom-pom and try not to let it drip back in there so I don't reapply any color. And I just um, gently swab down the surface of the sheath and the resiline will soak into the leather and seal this up really nice. I'm not going to seal the um, the edges because the edges are going to get the the dumb uh, dumb the gum tracking canth or tearing canth however you pronounce that um, that's going to soften up the edges so they can be melded together and uh, and sealed up together nicely. But this uh, resiline sometimes will bubble up on you when you're applying it. It bubbles will dry and uh, and dissipate and disappear. So do not worry about that. You'll get a nice glossy finish as they dry. Make sure I get the uh, the edge, the top of the sheath, where the blade goes in. I'm gonna get my, my belt loop, I'm gonna get my retention strap, seal up everything that you wanna seal, and very gently gonna put my pom-pom back in there without dripping uh, as much back in there because like I said, I did have dye on this pom-pom and I do not wanna transfer that back into my resiline. It looks like I did pretty good is that resiline's pretty milky colored. You wanna keep that milky color of the resiline. You don't wanna transfer any dye. But I can see the dye coming off um, of my pom-pom in the resiline. So it's probably not the best thing to do. If you have an extra pom-pom, just use another one. I have a bag of them, I'm just being lazy. I try to uh, try not to use these as much as possible, you know, or you know, get as much use out of them as I can um, before disposing them. So that's what I'm doing. Probably not the most advantageous way to apply this stuff, but it's working. So coat my retention strap as much as possible. You don't have to worry too much about getting it on the snap because it just will wipe right off the snap as it dries. Because obviously it will not stick to the brass. Retention strap looks good. I get the seams of the retention strap as well because this really seals the leather and prevents moisture from getting into the leather. You don't want your leather to absorb moisture and then transfer it to your knife because if you're using high carbon steel, it will cause rust to the blade if it sits in uh, something that has moisture retained into it, which leather does retain moisture. So seal up your leather as good as you can and uh, prevent any rusting to your blade. Uh, I do inside and out, get that retention strap really good. Make sure you see it um, pooling up on there. And because we have a rivet, in our retention strap, it's real easy to pull this back and get underneath as well. And it's definitely starting to foam up a bit when I apply it now, probably because I'm, I'm just, you know, spreading it pretty roughly, trying to get it in all the surfaces. But the more you uh, kind of sponge that pom-pom, uh, it kind of creates a little uh, bubble in there and, and uh, gets it kind of foaming up a little bit. So. I'll do the edge of the belt strap because I'm not worried about um, slicking that really, but I do want to slick the sides of the sheath 
with that uh, gum tragencanth or tarancanth, whatever the hell it's called, that will uh, seal up the seams and meld the uh, meld, meld the seams together nicely. So I get my uh, my belt strap as best I can, and uh, it's definitely creating a little more foam than it was when I started. So something to keep in mind. But like I said, those bubbles as it dries, they will dissipate if there's a lot of them, which uh, I've seen a lot built up before. Um, you sometimes get a rough finish when it dries, but not a big deal because you can uh, you can smooth it down with a uh, you know like a uh, cheesecloth or whatever, and sometimes it buffs off a little the finish, but not the uh, not the end of the world. It is uh, it is all fixable, you know whatever whatever little uh, things you might have to deal with that become problematic. They're not as problematic as you think at first. So that looks pretty good. Um, all sealed up, sealed around the strap, sealed around the uh, the belt loop. The only thing we want to seal is the back as well. And uh, the back on this sheath is unfinished because, like I said, we used the finished side down when we uh, when we made this sheet when we did the the back panel, or, or I should say, the finished side toward the inside. That way, when we folded our belt loop over, it uh, created a nice finished uh, belt loop. So. The top of the sheath looked finished. Now, if we flipped that leather around, you would have had an unfinished um, uh, portion of leather where the knife sat against. And I don't, I don't like that. I like nice smooth finished leather for the knife to sit against. Helps protect the knife, but it also uh, helps create a nice finished look for the uh, sheath. Now, I want to be real careful not to get any resolution um, near the seams of the sheath when I'm doing this on the backside because it will soak to the edge. And uh, that can cause a problem with the uh, the, the um, gum tragencanth. T r a g a c a n t h. So that's what it's called. But it's kind of like a jelly substance. Um, you put that on the seams and you let it sit for uh, a couple minutes, and you'll see that your seams start to soften up. Um, use gloves when you do that because it can uh, soak in through your skin. Um, any chemicals that you use when you're whether you're making knives or you're working on leather you should be wearing rubber gloves because your membrane of your 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 skin your dermal layer it any chemicals can pass right through that and get into your bloodstream and unless you like having uh, you know uh, blood disorders or any other uh, you can actually have kidney failure you can have uh, liver problems from getting chemicals into your bloodstream it's really dangerous so you want to be really careful to uh, you know, have PPE, make sure you've got uh, some glasses so nothing splashes in your eyes, and you have, um, you know, some good rubber nitro gloves on or uh, latex gloves to protect your skin. And uh, that's pretty much it. This looks pretty sealed up on the back and the front, and uh, we've got a nice, a nice sheen finish, and you'll see that looks really, really good. And that's a nice finish sheet. So as you uh, have it, uh, now we're going to slick the sides. Um, I'm not going to carry you through that whole process, but I will show you how I apply it. Um, we can actually use the same pom-pom again. And like I said before, you don't want to get a lot of it into the to the gum tragencanth, but if you soak the resoline out of the pom-pom, any that's left. Like I said, I just used uh, pretty much everything that was in that pom-pom on that sheath. I, I wring it right out. But some is coming out, and as you can see, it's kind of reactivated the dye, even though the dye was, was pretty dried out and soaked out of it. Um, some of that coloring still is in there, but um, you see my resoline is still pretty milky. I didn't get a lot out into the resoline, just dipping it. I tried to dip it lightly and dip it quick and then not drip any back in there. So that worked, and once you get a nice full absorbed pom-pom, it's enough to spread a sheath like this. So you don't have to go back and forth too much. Same thing with this. Um, you really only need a little bit on the seams. Usually I'll use, um, I'll shake this up pretty good, but I'll use a Q-tip and just go around the seams of the knife with a Q-tip with plenty um, of this substance on it and just apply it best I can. Um, but for now, I think I'm just going to use this pom-pom and I'm just going to go on the inside there and scoop a little out onto the pom-pom without dripping it back into the container as much as I can. And that should be enough. And you'll see that jelly is all on that pom-pom there. And we're going to coat the seams, like I said, best we can. We're going to make sure that's absorbed into those seams because this chemical uh, or concentrate will soften up those seams and allow us to meld them together with our slicking tool. And uh, like I said earlier, if you don't have a slicking tool, 
You can use the uh, a wooden handle to a hammer, that's fine. Um, really any piece of rounded wood would work great. You just uh, use create a little friction with the, with the wood, uh, running it back and forth on the uh, seam of the leather and it will the heat and the friction will soften up the leather and kind of meld everything together really nicely. But I try to get uh, be generous with this stuff on the seams. It, it'll jelly up on there, but then it'll soak in pretty well into the leather. The, the key is that it's soaked into the leather and it softens that leather up so it can be melded together. And then once the seams are all melded together and they looked pretty slick, they look pretty slicked up. Um, it'll take a little bit of friction with that slicking tool, but once they are all slicked up together and seamed, you can go and take, um, after they dry, you can take a little bit of, um, beeswax or something like that, and you can seal the edges as well. Um, it's not necessary really, but, um, it's good to do because they will, the, the seams from this chemical will be seamed as one once you're done. And it'll help close up the sheath and prevent any water from getting into it or, um, you know, help the sides from separating, but it'll give you a nice finished look, most importantly. And that's pretty good. So like I said, I'm gonna let this sit for a couple minutes and then I'm gonna take the slicking tool and just kind of go back and forth and slick it up. Um, maybe uh, since we've already slicked the starting side and we're just gonna leave this side, uh, this side soaking with the tearing can, um, I will slick that side uh, for you while you're here or uh, for myself and uh, for you to watch. <laughs> so that shouldn't take more than a second. I think it's already looking like it's it's soaking in here to the seams. It doesn't take very long. Like I said, it's just a just a jelly substance that uh, this leather soaks right up, allows you to slick those seams up. Before I... Uh, Applied this, I made sure my seams were very even together. Now you can take a, a coarse piece of sandpaper and you can sand your seams down um, to kind of make sure everything's level. But you can also take a uh, razor blade and just kind of scrape at it and get all the, the layers of leather in line with each other. They don't need to be perfect. If they're a little, little uh, gapped between them or they're a little jagged uneven, it's okay. It'll slick it out just fine. Let me get my slicking tool. Right. So here's my, my little hand slicking tool. As you can see, there's some grooves in there. Um, I have another wheel one that goes on the end of a drill, but we're not gonna use it right now. Here is my regular um, wooden leather mallet. You can use the handle of one of these just fine as well. Uh, so we'll go and we'll do a little bit of hand work with these. Um, sometimes I use the back side of this, sometimes I use the rounded side, and then sometimes if uh, I've got some thin leather, I'll just use a track there and uh, slick it with that track. Even just rounding the, uh, the face edge, I'll take that little track and uh, soften that face edge up a little bit. I make sure none of this stuff is getting on the, the face of the sheath that has been finished with the Resilin because I don't want it to uh, screw up my nice clean look to the Resilin. And uh, let's get started. So we'll just take the, uh, the back side of this and we'll slick away. And you might lighten some of the dye on this as, as, while you're doing this. Um, sometimes it, you know, wears away the dye a little bit, but don't worry about it. You can always re-dye. The key is that you're, uh, you're slicking the seams together, you're joining them. Look all right. It doesn't take a, a super lot to uh, to really start melding things together. Like I said, it's just a little friction applied with the chemical, and that will uh, will smooth your seam over. Now, I'm not the best at this. I've seen other people slick these together so nice that you can't even tell where the seams meet. Um, you know, I'm not a, a mad scientist with the leather. Um, like the leather work and I try to apply all the, uh, 
the methods for finishing the leather. It's uh, amazing what just a little extra can do. Uh, you can always go back and apply more tearing kits and uh, it'll work it over some more. And uh, it kind of turns it into a like a gummy uh, substance if you add too much. You don't really want to do that. You just want to soften the leather and get it pliable and then mold it together. And uh, it's doing really good on the top surface there, but the lower or the middle and the lower surface are kind of getting a little more stubborn, so I could add a little bit more of that sit longer. And like I said, again, I usually let this sit for a couple minutes and really let it soak into the leather. I didn't really do that this time around for the video's sake, but we can go back and do that. But what looks good at the clip of the sheet there. Boy, not bad. I'll take it. Good looking sheath. Okay, so that's what we got. Nice looking sheath. Nice uh, burnished edges. The uh, stitching's tied off nicely. Um, I actually came back down with the stitching. Um, we did a, a track up the one side every other hole because I ran out of the stitching on the spool, but I had more pulled back on the tail. So I ran the tail with a needle up and down and then back down and I ended up tying off down at this seam here which really I wasn't what I wanted it wasn't the most ideal situation but it worked out good because we have still have a double track all the way around and it it looks pretty uh pretty even on both sides so nice looking sheath uh good looking knife to go in it and uh another finished blade from dark angel cutlery I thank you for watching and I hope you learned something about stitching and uh and leather work today and uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or there's, uh, there's anything else I can show you that might help. Um, like I said, I'm not a perfectionist and I'm just scratching the surface. I've been doing this for a few years and I have a long way to go before I'm at where I'd like to be at. But uh, hopefully I can bring you there. I'm Dan, Dark Angel Cutlery. Be good to each other.